Welcome back in. Hope all of you are having a fantastic Monday, wherever you may be across this great country or this great land. Uh, We are running through the college football and the NFL landscape. We're going to be joined, by the way, in hour three by Fox lead college football analyst Joel Klatt. But as we finish off the program here in the Geico Outkick Studios to finish off hour two, I want to hit you with a couple of different things. One, again, I would encourage you to go read what I write about uh, the college football landscape if you are a big fan of college football as I am. I really kind of got my start writing and talking about sports, writing about college football. And uh, and so I still do several thousand words every single um, every single Sunday morning right after the Saturday games. And there are a couple things that uh, that I think are also worth hitting we haven't hit so far. First of all, I rank my OutKick Top 10. And when I do the OutKick Top 10, I try to do it in the context of only games that have actually taken place. In other words, I don't do a preseason expected poll. I look at the games that have actually been played and rank based on those games all the way through. So I'm not ranking anybody in the Big Ten, anybody in the Pac-12, anybody that hasn't played already. And so here is my top 10 as it stands as we get ready for the next week in college football. I've got Alabama 1, I've got Georgia 2, I've got Clemson 3, Florida 4, Notre Dame 5, Miami 6, Tennessee 7, BYU 8, Oklahoma State 9, and Cincinnati 10. All right, so my top 10 in college football right now, no Big Ten teams included, no Pac-12 teams included because none of those teams have played. I've got Bama 1, Georgia 2, Clemson 3, Florida 4, Notre Dame 5, Miami 6, Tennessee 7, BYU 8, Oklahoma State 9, and Cincinnati 10. So that is kind of putting a bow on the college football discussion for hour two. We'll discuss this with Joel Klatt here coming up in a few minutes in the third hour of the program. But I also want to hit on a little bit, and we'll talk about this some at the start of hour three as well. The Miami Heat came back last night after getting down 0-2 and won game three to make it a little bit potentially more interesting of a series. Jimmy Butler went off. But here's something you're not hearing very many people talk about in the overall landscape of sports. Game two of this series was played on Friday night. We don't have the ratings yet for game three. But if I am in an NBA ownership group, or if I'm an NBA executive, or I'm a television executive, I am getting heartburn every time the NBA ratings come back. On Friday night, with virtually no competition... Because all we had was the San Diego Padres going up against the St. Louis Cardinals. The only other really major sporting event going on Friday night. Only 4.5 million people watched the NBA Finals Game 2. That is the fewest number of people that have ever watched an NBA Finals going all the way back throughout my entire life. Think about that for a minute. Fewer than any point in the last 40 years, viewership for the NBA. And last year, when the Toronto Raptors were playing against the Golden State Warriors, 13.9 million people watched. This year, game two, that's game two last year. This year, game two, 4.5 million people watched. Nearly a 70% decline in audience for the NBA. That's worse than any sporting event that we have seen anywhere. Why? I think because the NBA has gotten too woke. And people get mad at me when I point out what is, I believe, incontrovertibly true. People want to watch sports to escape the serious things in their lives. There's politics everywhere. It's impossible to escape everything to the nth degree is political now. And the NBA embraced left-wing politics more than any sports league ever has. They got woke, and as a result, their ratings are going broke. And I don't know how they're going to dial this back for next season, but if Adam Silver and these owners and the Players Association representatives and everybody who cares about the business side sits down with the players and says, hey, look, you're going to make half of what you thought you were going to make in your salaries based on 
the way things are going right now with the lack of fan attendance, with the lack of viewership, with the overall collapse of the NBA brand. Jason Whitlock wrote a good column. We'll talk to him about this tomorrow, about how he believes uh, that, that the legacy of LeBron James is going to be that he completely forfeited all the goodwill that was built up by Magic and Larry and Michael Jordan and everybody else in the NBA over the last 40 years. The NBA, remember the NBA is fantastic. I love this game. It's not that league anymore. They have decided to get immensely political, and as a result, the vast majority of American sports fans have said, I'll find something else to do. And I'm probably the only show that will even talk about this because so many people are afraid to point this out because they're like, oh, people will be mean to me on Twitter if I point out that the NBA is collapsing. Think about how much the NFL got ripped and how much coverage there was when its ratings dropped by 19%. The NBA ratings just dropped by almost 70%. It's unheard of. From 13.9 million watching Game 2 last year to 4.5 million watching Game 2 this year. That's unheard of. 